Coming up, dozens are killed and hundreds wounded as a Russian missile hits a Ukrainian train station where innocent civilians were fleeing the war-torn country. That death toll is expected to rise. Plus, the Kremlin now admitting the loss of troops, but still denying their involvement in war crimes. We'll get you the latest. And this, the Drug Enforcement Agency warning of a major U.S. opioid crisis on the horizon. Will the southern border surge create a perfect storm for illegal deadly drugs to come into the U.S.? One U.S. Attorney General will join us to weigh in. Plus, a Disney employee breaking his silence after the House of Mouse announces public opposition to Florida's parental rights and education law. You don't want to miss that interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third hour of National Report. I'm Emma Reckenberg. Sean Kreisman has the day off today. Day 44 of Putin's war in Ukraine. As horrific images come to light, many are calling for the U.S. to do more. What exactly can be done and what would really stop Putin from continuing his advancement? We'll follow that. But first, turning now to the conflict at our southern border, Texas Governor Greg Abbott holding strong on his mission to bus illegal migrants to our nation's capital. The Biden administration, though, is pushing back on that plan. For a closer look at what's happening, let's bring in Newsmax border correspondent Jason Jones, live for us in Texas. Jason, when it comes to dealing with this impending surge of migrants, what is the Lone Star State's response? Well, you know, we've got to look at the data where they are right now. The governor is being forced to create what he is calling his zero tolerance policy after the March numbers show a massive increase of people crossing into the United States at the southwest border now sitting at 217,000 apprehensions from the preliminary data that we were able to get from CBP. So two of the enforcement efforts, as you just talked about, uh, concerning fentanyl coming into the United States that DEA is warning about, uh, one of the enhancements that the governor is taking out is going to be enhanced safety inspections at all of the ports of entry. Most of the controlled substances coming into the United States, like the deadly drug fentanyl and methamphetamine, are crossing at those ports of entry. I can tell you as of yesterday at the Far Bridge, we were able to get photographs of the first of the rollout of these enhanced inspections taking place to try to find uh, more of this fentanyl and deadly drugs crossing into the country, but also to stop human trafficking and human smuggling. In addition to that, the governor's also rolled out a plan to start busing migrants to Washington, D.C. And I know this has made the political rounds But this is going to be on a voluntary basis. There are a lot of people crossing into the country and then being released here along the southwest border in Texas. This is another option to get people to take uh, voluntary action to get out of the state of Texas and back to uh, D.C., where they are voluntarily going to be able to go. And I know, Jason, you were keeping an eye out for some of those migrants who might be boarding the buses voluntarily. So uh, we'll check back in with you throughout the coming weeks and bring our viewers updates on that. Jason Jones, thank you very much for your reporting. Meantime, this, as the number of illegal migrants crossing the border increases at an alarming rate, so does the potential for drugs to make their way into the U.S. The DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, now warning that fentanyl is killing Americans at an unprecedented rate. Already this year, numerous mass overdose events have resulted in dozens of overdoses and deaths. Drug traffickers are driving addiction and increasing their profits by mixing fentanyl with other illicit drugs. Tragically, many overdose victims have no idea they're ingesting deadly fentanyl until it's too late. Joining us now to discuss is West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey. AG, thanks for coming on today. Um, That is a very powerful statement and powerful warning from the DEA. What do you take away from that? Well, I think that's incredibly accurate because fentanyl has been just so destructive in West Virginia. And it's destructive because uh, they're getting the raw ingredient shipped from China to the Mexican drug cartels. Those drug cartels are packaging the product up and then it flows eventually into the U.S., getting into the heartlands. And our state's been devastated by fentanyl. Uh, It's interesting because there's been so little attention by the Biden administration on the fentanyl problem and the border concerns. And now you're starting to see just an absolute explosion in new fentanyl cases uh, in West Virginia and across the country. So I'm glad to see the DEA Uh, really focus on this. I think a lot more needs to be done. I've called for the firing of the Homeland Security Secretary because he's been an unmitigated disaster. Uh, But it's a long past time that the Biden administration makes this a real priority. West Virginia, as we know, it's not a border state. 
But as you point out, there's an epidemic there, an opioid one, uh, three yeah. times the national average. 96,000 people have died from drug overdoses each year. Opioids are a factor. Seven out of every 10 overdose deaths, nearly a million people have died from overdose deaths since 1999. Uh, so we've got those stats for you on your screen. AG, what needs to be done uh, right now, in considering the White House is going to lift Title 42? Is now the time to do that? No, of course it's not the time to do it. I mean, these guys seem to want to do anything other than secure our borders. And we see the problem manifest not only in terms of the raw number of people coming across every single day, but in human trafficking. When I was down at the border, down in McAllen, and along the Rio Grande just a couple uh, months ago, we were learning that the drug cartels were making $100 million a week in human trafficking smuggling. Then you look at the volume of fentanyl flooding in. These guys have been doing everything wrong in this area for the last year, and many people are dying as a result. But there are other factors that we need to look at as well. As many people know, uh, West Virginia right now is in the middle of a trial against some of the makers of uh, the supposedly legal uh, opioids. And those have been particularly challenging because our lawsuit alleges that there's been uh, misleading marketing and, and omissions and failure of these companies to meet their duty and pushing concepts known as pseudo addiction. So what happens is a lot of people come in through the gateway of these legal pain pill products. And then many of those people then go on to fentanyl or to heroin and other products. So uh, this is a complicated mess. Uh, but we do know that the Biden administration has not been helping at all along the border. But uh, there's a lot that needs to be done. I, look, I think the DEA comment you read, uh, Ann Milgram has done some good things. She's serious. I wish that Mayorkas was uh, remotely as serious mm -hmm. as Milgram. When you talk about these lawsuits, uh, specifically one against Johnson and Johnson, you've described the drug maker as causing a tsunami of addiction. Yeah. Tell me about the people who are really behind these lawsuits, uh, who are bringing these lawsuits forward. Are these families who've lost loved ones to these addictions? Well, at the opening uh, that I delivered on Monday, I talked about the 10,054 uh, people in West Virginia who have died uh, from drug overdoses. That's from 1999 to 2019. That's just an amazing amount of people. It touches every part of our state. And so we focused in on uh, the folks that were making these so-called legal pain pills and showing their marketing practices and how they failed to meet their duty under West Virginia laws. And I think that a lot of people believe that West Virginia was kind of an easy prey. And obviously, West Virginia has been ground zero for the opioid epidemic. But what happened is over a prolonged period of time, yeah. uh, these yeah. marketing practices grew the total share, the number of people addicted. I'm speaking for all the people in our state who are negatively affected by this terrible, terrible epidemic. Yeah, and they need their voices heard, indeed. Attorney General Patrick Morrissey joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.